Unlocking the mysteries of non-obstructive azospermia, a condition that affects male fertility, requires a deeper understanding of hormone levels and their implications. In numerous studies, researchers have found a crucial link between FSH levels and the health of the testes in azospermia cases. Elevated levels of FSH often indicate three things. One, primary testicular failure. Two, damage within the testes. Three, lower number of spermatogonial stem cells. For those with higher FSH levels, recovery using prolistum treatments may extend beyond six months. However, normal FSH levels suggest regular spermatogonial stem cell counts, often leading to a diagnosis of maturation arrest or a mix of maturation arrest and Sertoli cell conditions. Conversely, very high FSH levels may indicate Sertoli cell-only syndrome and a lower number of spermatogonial stem cells. In such cases, a longer treatment plan, possibly up to a year, needs to be considered. The groundbreaking treatment specifically designed for non-obstructive azospermia. While Prolistum offers hope, it's important to note that success rates vary from patient to patient. Various factors come into play, influencing the treatment's efficacy, from lifestyle choices to genetic predispositions, each element plays a role. We keep trying to understand non-obstructive azospermia better because the more we learn, the more we'll understand.